Good morning. I'm uh, Gary McDonald, Mechanical Solutions. And uh, I will, although this is what I consider to be a simple uh, training on submersible sump pump, I will stay as long as you have questions. If you want to go see it, take it apart, that's fine. But I assume most of you are familiar with wastewater products and pump equipment. So I don't want to talk below you, but yet I don't want to skimp over and pretend nothing's uh, ever going to happen. It's a mechanical device. Someday it will fail. And with that said, you're going to have to come into action and do something to get it back up in operation. So going through the O&M manual, the first part of it shows the unit itself. It's a lightweight, portable, submersible sump pump. Probably two-thirds of you have them in all your homes. Where I was down in the basement, the sump pump was kicking on. Looked like somebody had uh, I-beam above it and maybe had tried to pull it out at some point. The what do you guys feel are important on sump pumps? What do you maintain or what do you think about them? The things on sump pumps, liability is important uh, in that it doesn't destroy property, etc. Reliability. reliability. Okay. Reliability sort of goes with that whole thing of cost. You know, as you've got a used car, you buy one for 500, not very reliable. You buy one for 5,000, not too bad. You buy one for 10. This one's. Look, this is a pretty decent one, but you're only pumping 20 gallons a minute. 20 gallons a minute is into the light duty classification. So how heavy duty can you make it? <clears throat> the other requirement of this was that it had to be USA because you had ARRA funding. So it was a little tough finding a corrosion duty, some pump that qualified being built in the United States. A lot of these little pumps are Asia, China, wherever the heck, who knows where they're from. So with that said, where are they putting these pumps at? These are in the biofilter. All right, it's uh, 20 gallon a minute, 25 feet ahead. Pretty nasty stuff. It's not heavy on solids, but it's heavy on um, pH. The pH could go as low as two. So when you are handling this pump, make sure you've got the rubber gloves and all the protective equipment because it's nasty stuff coming from the biofilter. That said, they should be submerged at all times, like sump pumps, uh, submersible sump pumps. The issue with a sump pump, if it is not submerged, what can happen? Burn out, overheat. There's two or three things that are important on sump pumps. It actually uses the liquid around it to cool it, the motor inside. So if you let it continually run dry, it is going to overheat. Second thing is it's got a mechanical seal inside. Most sump pumps, when it draws down too low and it continues to pump without liquid being in there, the mechanical seal will heat up and seize. This case, this has a, uh, an oil buffer above the mechanical seal that you'll see in the breakout that I'll show to you. So it's a little bit better. It can run dry for a few, you know, portions of time. Don't make a practice of it. If you ever look in the pit and you see the pump, not a good sign. You want to be able to just maybe see the cord coming out and that the unit is pumping down. Uh, the other thing some pumps don't like are solids. If you wanted a solid handling pump, it'd be called a non-clog style pump. This is a sump pump. It'll handle half inch solids. That does not mean stones. It doesn't mean you know, the lunch bag gets thrown into the pit. That'll eventually get caught up into the pump and eventually somebody's going to have to pull the pump. And uh, so keep the debris out of there. Keep water above it. 
Um, and remember it's corrosion resistant. From that perspective, don't use your hands on it. Now actually I should get to the O&M and actually see <coughs> what I'm supposed to be saying here. It has a strainer on here. You can, if for some reason you find that this pump is clogging on the strainer, you can take the strainer off. It shows how to take it off so it can pass bigger solids. But just with that you get how big do you want to go? You know, and then now you're clogging, and now it's into the impeller versus on the outside of the strainer. The other thing is, this is 480 volt three phase, and it's wired into a Hubble switch, into a HOA uh, control device for start stop operation on this sump. H being hand, turn it to hand, the pump will run. O for off. A for auto. Auto is based on level controls in the pit. There's an off switch, an on switch, and a high level alarm. There's also another one inherent on the pump. So when this one flips totally up, high level alarm, it'll be another one for you. And it's also a low level, trying to prevent the pump from ever running dry. The other issue on running dry or when you look down and you see the pump, it's clear as day and it's still running, there's no liquid, what other problems are you going to get into? Think of pumping, you got liquid, it's now going to be pumping air. Not only is it screwing up the mechanical seal, one of the hardest thing on a pumping piping system is getting air out of the lines. So when it does, you know, water now comes back into it, it's never going to be pumping the quite the same amount because it's got that air bubble in the discharge line. It'll eventually get out, but air in a line is just a nightmare. It's just, you know, you're trying to pump and it compresses air. And then it's going to go to the high point in your, your system. Maybe it's piped correctly, straight, nice run out to the application. More than likely it's got some bends, it's got some twists, it's got an elbow, it's got a check valve. Chances are the high point in the line isn't your discharge point. From that I mean you're going to have that little air bubble sitting up there. So try not to have it run dry because that causes problems for weeks to come. Uh, let's see what else. Safety information obviously. Uh, it's electrical device. It's submersible. Make sure that you've got an electrician nearby when you disconnect it. Uh, shocking of 480 volts, even at, this is three quarter horsepower. Low amps, but still it will give you the shock of your life. Um, continuing on, it's a model U6K. Uh, it goes through as to hand tightening. When you're putting it back together again, it's plastic. I know it's polyethylene and kynar and all these other fancy plastics. It's still plastic. Don't go using a one foot wrench on it. Hand tighten it and tweak it just a little bit. Just like PVC pipe. Just don't overkill. Uh, it goes through the dimensions of the chamber. It's already been sized with your engineer. It's plenty ample. Uh, the on off switches being set by your uh, instrumentation people. And I'm now into a page that shows the levels here for that float. And typically, you want the off above the pump inlet, thus to prevent air from getting in the line. The uh, on to be something around the height of the pump, and the high level never to be higher than the inlet coming in. You don't want to back up your flow coming into the sump pit. Also at this, it shows how to disconnect the pump and take that strainer off. It shows a drill there and taking out uh, the legs. So you can get down to real low pumping as well, 0.6 millimeters. Problem with going down real low, obviously solids. Anything bigger than that size will not be able to get into the pump. 
Uh, got a little bit here on troubleshooting, no pump operation, check the electrical, check a fuse, check the main supply cable. Again, being a submersible pump, it's got rubber cable coming out. If that cable ever becomes nicked, uh, pinched, unlikely in this case that the pump would eat its cord, but some of the bigger pumps that you see on submersible pumps can get wrapped up around the pump, especially submersible mixers. You got to check that cord for nicks. It may not look like you know, a bad nick, and you may think you could use electrical tape over it. Problem is that little bit of moisture wicks through that cord and will eventually find its way into something and it'll kick out. So any of the smallest nick, these cords are, you know, they're, they're pricey, but, you know, you still got to do it right. The only good thing is, well, I shouldn't be telling you this, but any nick near the end, you got 20 feet of cord. From what I understand from our startup tech who started up yesterday, it's about a 10 foot run. If you nick the cord, just chop the cord there at that point, do away with it, and just because you've got 10 feet of extra cord. I'd love you to buy extra cord, but nobody's getting rich at $80 a cord. Uh, impeller blocked, solids or fibrous matter have become lodged in a pump housing, clean it. Uh, pump runs, but uh, does not pump. Empty the pressure pipe or hose to allow a non-return valve to open and the air to escape from the pump housing. It may be necessary to carry out a ventilation drilling. It's not going to um, Some cases the pump could become air bound. We talked about air, air getting up in there. If you release the check valve, that is some of the head. Maybe the air will escape. Decrease pumping performance. Clean the strainer. Uh, check your discharge pipe. Replace the rotor, which could be worn out. You have two identical pumps. Actually, I think you've got four of these from phase one and phase two. The same brand of pump, same manufacturer. Uh, 2005, we've never seen a parts order. So the, the uh, rotor being worn out, probably not something you're going to see before 10 years. Uh, it does have a full warranty on the, the pump and the motor, but Start-stop operation, 20 gallons a minute, you should get real good long life out of this. Anytime you see the pump continually running, you know, it's just running all the time, then you may second guess as to why is the flow coming in so much? Is it actually pumping? And here's the other big one. Why would the pump be running and not pumping so good? It's a three-phase pump. What happens on three-phase electricals? Well, can go backwards. Might have been a power failure. Maybe the electrician was working in the panel, disconnected something. There's a remote chance that when it was turned back on, it's now rotating the wrong way. Unlikely, you know, unless something was totally revamped. It's been checked. And every time it started, we got a 50-50 chance that it's running right. It was checked yesterday. All the pump tests were done on it. Actually, that's the last time. Wrong direction of rotation for a three-phase current. Ask a qualified electrician to change two phases of the supply line. We have the exploded diagram, which we'll get in that training video. All the components here. Hopefully, you never have to take this pump apart in this manner. Maybe taking the bottom off, do a little bit of cleaning. Um, you do have spare parts. You've got spare mechanical seals, spare O-rings, and uh, the gasket set. Um, you then have to weigh, not telling you what to do, but you have to weigh what your labor time is worth versus calling up and saying, how much is the price and delivery of a new sump pump? Just something to consider.